as well. Get your thoughts down below, guys. So let's get into this. Mikel Marino to Arsenal. Here we go. Verbal agreement in place for the Spanish midfielders to join the Gunners. It's going to be a 32 million euro plus a 5 million add on, uh, plus 5 million add on, sorry, with uh, favorable payment terms and the contracts until 2028. Uh, Arsenal closing on the Marino deal since the end of the uh, end of July. And of course, Marino only wanted Arsenal. So there we go. 32 million plus 5 million add ons, guys. That is in euros there. Um, but yeah, he's officially signed uh, for uh, Arsenal. There we go. Here we go. Here we land. Get in there, guys. We finally got our player, Mikel Marino. Make sure you get your thoughts down below. How happy are you guys with this signing? And, um, you know, it's it's going to be like, first, we have to give my overall thoughts now, and I'll get into you guys' thoughts very shortly. But I think, you know, um, overall, like, when we first linked with him, I was like, all right, you know, one of those ones, really. It wasn't really, didn't really get me too, like, excited. Um, but as time's gone on, when I've really focused and really done my research on the player and, you know, really sort of looked into this player, obviously, that we, we, it's been going on for about a month now, yeah? And, you know, we finally got it done now, but... As I've obviously looked into the player more, I've watched him a lot more. Um, just look at, you know, the, the, the sort of the type of player he is. Uh, I think it's a decent signing. I really do. You know, he's uh, 28 years of age. Obviously, we know he's been in the Premier League once before. He had one season playing in the Premier League, um, playing with Newcastle. He was indeed on loan at Newcastle for that one season. That was a few years ago. That was back in 2018, wasn't it, as well? Um, so, yeah, he had one season in the Premier League already. Um back in playing for Newcastle and then obviously he's been at Sociedad um, had been getting that experience playing with Sociedad obviously was in the Euro winning squad he is a you know Euro winner uh, he actually was a big part of that he did score the winning goal against Germany um, from a header off the bench and uh, that's where I main, of course mainly saw the guy play is uh, is there but um, look, this guy's going to be coming in guys as we know most likely uh, where he usually does play is the left eight role uh, he's, we, you know, and I think, as I said before, we've been lacking, you know, that left eight, uh, saw that, you know, left eight role there, saw that natural number eight there because other, I mean, as I said last season, like, Arnett played Havertz there for the start of it. I don't like it. personally. I don't think it suits him there. I think he's more a centre forward. Um, Arnett tried Declan Rice there towards the end of the season, of course, when we played the three in the midfield of Rice, Party, and Odegaard. He, he put Trossard there. Like, he didn't really have a proper natural number eight. I feel like Marino coming in, you know, is going to be that natural eight. And, you know, what that does do is it ultimately uh, bolsters our, you know, left-hand side. You know, our, our left-hand side now is, is going to become so much more um, stronger because we actually have a left eight there. Um, and, you know, what I've seen the small size of Marino is that he plays it very well there. Like, you know, and it ultimately give players like Gabriel Martinelli, a bit more support there. Having a left back there as well in Cadaflori or Julian Timber, having a number eight there as well. And then our left winner, where it would be Trossard or Martinelli, you know, because I feel like we've got a very strong right side, guys. Yeah, with Ben White right back, we know how good he is overlapping, getting forward, right? You've got Saka on the win and you've got Odegaard there as well. And, and the right-hand side is really good, really strong. But then you go to the left-hand side and it was it kept changing last season, didn't it? You know, like a left back, we, we played uh, Kivi or Tomiyasu, Zinchenko. Zinchenko's always inverting and then didn't really help out Martinelli too much. Um, and obviously that left eight as well kept changing as well. So Marino coming in, playing in that left eight role, um, I think is, you know, he's, he's showing good signs. He's showing some really good signs um, playing there. But at the same time, I feel like he has characteristics as well. And it, it wouldn't surprise me. I think that, don't get me wrong, I think the midfield is going to be... Uh, Marino, Rice and Odegaard, Rice in the six. But it wouldn't surprise me if we change it around because we have seen Rice play number eight. We have seen Rice play more advanced in certain games. We saw it um, We saw it at the start of this season, you know, when we played Rice, Pai, Odegaard. And we saw it um, at the end of last season. So at the end of the day, it wouldn't surprise me if we would change that around in certain games, you know, because I feel like Marino is a very physical player. You know, he's very athletic, very like sort of, you know, he's like six foot two, isn't he as well? So, you know, he's, he's you know, technically gifted as all, you know, Spanish ballers are. Um, so I just feel maybe we could see them change around as well. I feel like he has, and this is what Fabrizio said uh, ages ago, apparently Arteta views him in different roles as well. 
So it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, one game we could switch. He could play six or he could play eight. But I see it mainly him coming in, guys, as the left eight. I feel like we've been lacking that. And, you know, Mika Marina coming in, um, obviously, for, you know, 32 million plus 5 million add-ons. Yeah, I, I think the payment's decent. Um, I think it's a very good signing. I think we've been lacking that midfielder there, as I said. But then my next point is we have, what, eight days left until the window does officially end? We've got literally eight days left till the window end, guys, yeah? And we still need more. We we still need a striker for me and the winner. And we also need to sell a few more players there. You know, players like Eddie Ninkia, looks like he's really guys not in the forest now. Players like Reese Nelson, uh, looking like he's, you know, on his way to, you know, uh, Leicester maybe. Uh, Jack Okivior as well. Maybe we can move him, move him on and get some money for him. So there's still a lot of work to do, Edu, you know. I think getting the midfielder in was crucial and we did do that with, in signing Mika Marino. And time will tell how good the signing will be because there's always that question mark about, you know, he's, he has been in the Premier League before. Did he really hit the ground running? I know it's, for, you know, for one season. I do understand. I know, I, know, I know he's a bit more inexperienced. I know he's a bit more younger, but you always have that question mark of these players coming in. Can they adapt to the style of play and, and you know, sort of uh, the Premier League? But I think the way how Arteta plays, you know, I think it suits Mika Marino. And obviously, that's why we signed him. But, um, yeah, I just feel we still need more, man. You know, we've got eight days left. Are we... Is, is that, you know... I'm just going off the basis of, of what I've seen with these two deals. You know, look how long the Calafori deal took to do and look how long the Mika Marino uh, deal took to do. So it, it wouldn't surprise me if we were to get a striker in because uh, that's what we need is another striker and the winner. Are we going to do that in eight days? Just judging off what we've been seeing in the past, you know. Maybe deadline day settings, guys. Yeah, maybe deadline day settings. We might actually sign someone on a deadline day, but... We still need more there, guys. Yeah, I think the defense is fully, fully stacked. Yeah, that like the defense, you know, we had the best defense last season in, in the Premier League. We've we've added that with Kyle Floyd. We've got Timber coming back. We have many options there, many versatile players there. You can play defense. You can fill in at center back, left back, right back. So I think that's sorted. Midfield now, you know, coming in, uh, Marino coming in as that eight. We can have Rice there. Party is there as well. If he can stay fully fit, he's an important player, I, I believe. If he says fully fit, obviously Odegaard's there as well now. Uh, Jorginho is still at the club. He signed a contract extension. Um, obviously T-Bag, Fabio Vieira. I don't know what's going to happen with him, but it looks like he's most likely going to be staying. Um, so, yeah, I think the midfield is there. I just still think it's the it's a backup for Saka that we need. And it's the um, striker. Two more positions, guys. Um, I mean, again, I, I hear it like if people want to sign a wide attacker someone could play both there then maybe that's what we, we can see Edu doing but ultimately we still need more to do what's required to go and win this lead out in my opinion yeah I think Marino's a decent signing but I think we still need more there um so yeah uh it's finally done guys um <laughs> it's took a month but Edu's finally got the signing of Marino done and uh yes looking forward to see how he does uh I, I don't know whether he'll because he obviously he's not been fully announced yet by Arsenal maybe tomorrow that or maybe Friday. So I, I don't think he'll make the game against Aston Villa, guys. Um, he could do. I don't know. But obviously, he's um, not been training with Sojad either. Um, he's been the past two weeks. No, not even that. I think the past week or so, he was removed from the Sojad squad um, and he's not even been training with them. So, uh, yeah, I just feel I don't think he'll be ready for the Villa game. Would you guys even start him for the Villa game? Let me know. If he is ready, would you guys play him straight away? Let me know. To try him in a game like this, you know, uh, let me know. But guys, get the likes up as well. Um, if you are new to the channel, make sure you do subscribe. We are on the road to 9,000 subscribers. So many of you guys in here as well. Um, thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Make sure you get your like, uh, uh, make sure you guys get your likes up as well. And if you are